Hello students. Today let us discuss the topic screw thread terminology. So when helical grooves are formed on the exterior then the thread is called as an external thread. So here we can see external threads which are formed outside or on the exterior surface of a cylindrical shape. So these are the external threads. When the helical grooves are formed on the interior of a circular hole then it is called as internal thread or nut. So in nuts we have seen that the threads are formed on the inside of a circular hole. So that is a internal thread. So if there is only one single helical groove then it is called single start thread. And if there are n number of helical ridges running side by side around a cylinder then they are known as n start thread or multi start threads is formed on the exterior of a right circular cone or on the interior of right circular conical hole. So a taper thread is formed on a cone. So if this is a cone then the grooves or the threads are formed on this cone. So this is called as the conical thread. So the bottom of the groove in between the two ridges is called as the root. So this is the bottom of the groove in between the ridges. So this is one ridge and this is the second ridge. So the bottom in between the two ridges is called as the root. So the most important part of the ridge is called as the crest. So this is the crest that is the tip of the groove. So a crest or root may be either curved or flat in axial section depending upon the type of a thread. So this root here it may be flat or it may be curved depending upon the type of the thread. So there are different types of threads among them depending upon them the root and the crust will be either flat or they may be curved. The straight part of the contour of the ridge that connects the crest and the root is called as the flank. So here this path that is so this part is called as the flank which is connecting the crush and the root. Angle of thread. So here we can see the angle of the thread and it is defined as the angle between two adjacent flanks or slopes of the thread measured on an axial plane. So it is an angle formed between two adjacent flanks or slopes of the thread measured on an axial plane. Flank angle. So here this is the flank angle. So the angle between the individual flank and the perpendicular to the axis of the thread which passes through the vertex of the fundamental triangle it is commonly known as half angle of the thread. So it is an angle between the individual flank and a line perpendicular to the axis of the thread. So if this is the axis of the thread when we draw a line perpendicular to it then it passes through this line. So the angle between the flank and this line which is drawn perpendicular to the axis of the thread and it passes through the vertex of the fundamental triangle and it is known as half angle of the thread. So here we can see the angle of the thread is it is covering the it is covering two flanks. So this flank angle is called as half angle of a thread. So pitch is the distance which is measured 
parallel to the axis of the thread between corresponding points on the adjacent threads so here we can see the pitch so it is a distance between which is measured parallel to the axis so here if this is the axis of the thread it is being measured parallel to the axis of the thread and in between corresponding points on the adjacent threads so here this is one thread and this is the other in between these points this pitch is being measured and it is measured in the same axial plane and on the same side so the same side of the axis so pitch is equal to the lead divided by the number of thread starts so axis of the thread so this is an imaginary line running longitudinally to the center of the screw thread so if we are taking the magnification see here whatever is shown here is the magnification of this part so if this is the screw thread then the line which is passing through the axis of this screw thread is called as the axis of thread so here it is mentioned here axis of thread cumulative pitch is the distance between two corresponding points over a given number of threads so here cumulative pitch is a distance between corresponding points if they have mentioned the number of threads the distance between these corresponding points of that number of threads is called as cumulative pitch so this cumulative pitch can be measured over a complete number of pitches or it may include fraction of pitch in which case the point over it is measured will not lie in a plane so we can consider the full pitch for measuring this cumulative pitch or we can even consider fraction of the pitch in which case the points over which it is measured are not lying in a plane so this measurement can be best considered as the axial distance between two planes which are normal to the axis and pass through two points so the next one is lead so what is lead it is the axial distance moved by the threaded part when it is given one complete revolution about its axis with respect to a fixed mating thread so when we are moving or when we rotate a thread or when we revolve a thread about its axis with respect to a fixed mating thread then the distance which the thread part moves is called as the lead lead angle so on a straight thread a lead angle is the angle made by helix of the thread at the pitch line with a plane perpendicular to the axis so if this is the helix so the on a straight thread which has the threads here will not be at an angle but they will be straight in a straight thread so when we measure a lead angle on the straight thread we can find that so the lead angle is the angle which is made by the helix of the thread at the pitch line so if this is the pitch line the angle which is made by the helix of the thread at the pitch line with a plane perpendicular to the axis so if this is the plane which is perpendicular to the axis if the angle is made on the pitch line with the helix that is the curve then that is called as the lead angle the next is the helix angle 
so helix angle is the angle which is made by the helix of the thread at the pitch line with the axis so if this is the helix so the angle made between the helix at the pitch line with the line perpendicular or with the axis of the thread is called as the helix angle this angle is measured in axial plane depth or height of the thread so it is the distance between the crest so if this is a crest the distance between the crest of the thread to the root of the thread so if this is the root it is measured perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the thread so this is the longitudinal axis and this depth of the thread is measured perpendicular to this longitudinal axis axial thickness is the distance between the opposite faces of the same thread which is measured along the pitch line in a direction which is parallel to the axis of the thread this is the axial thickness so the distance between these two faces of the same thread or opposite faces of the same thread it is measured along this pitch line and in a direction which is parallel to the longitudinal axis of the thread fundamental triangle so when we extend the flanks to point b and c we will obtain a triangle so this triangle which we obtain abc this is called as the fundamental triangle crest or root truncation so it is the radial distance from the crest or root to the nearest apex of the fundamental triangle so if this is the apex the crust is the radial distance crust truncation is the radial distance from the crust to the nearest apex of the fundamental triangle so if this is the crust and this is the apex of the triangle the distance between these two will give you the crust truncation which is mentioned here the same way if this is the apex or if this is the apex of the triangle and this is the root then the distance between these two will give the root truncation which is mentioned here the next is the addendum so for an external thread it is defined as the radial distance between the major diameter and the pitch line so here this is the major diameter from here to here this is the major diameter and this is the pitch line so the distance between the major diameter and the pitch line is called as the addendum so for an internal thread it is the radial distance between the minor diameter and the pitch line so if this is the minor diameter which is mentioned here the distance between this diameter and the pitch line will give the addendum the next one is the dedendum now it is defined as the radial distance between the pitch line and the minor diameter for an external thread so here we can see this is the radial distance between so this is the dedendum it is the radial distance between the pitch line and the minor diameter so this distance is called dedendum but for an internal thread it is a radial distance between the major diameter and the pitch line it is opposite to 
addendum in internal threads so what is the major diameter major diameter is the diameter of an imaginary cylinder which is coaxial with the screw which just touches the crest of an external thread or the roots of an internal thread so it is often called as the outside diameter or it may be called as crest diameter or full diameter so if we imagine that there is a cylinder touching the crest for the external thread and this will become the roots for the internal thread so the line which is touching the crest of the external thread and it is coaxial to the screw so the full diameter of the screw is called as the external diameter it is also called as the outside diameter or crest diameter minor diameter so this is the diameter of the pitch cylinder or imaginary cylinder which is coaxial with the axis of the screw and it intersects the flanks of the thread in such a way that the width of the threads and the width of the spaces between the threads are equal so here we can see what is the minor diameter so this is the minor diameter so this is all about the screw thread terminology